to Where Are They Now? Quarantine Edition with Wild Horse Productions. I'm Carol Scott, Executive Director of Wild Horse Productions. And with me today is a longtime alumni. We haven't seen him for a while, AJ Dana. Hi, AJ. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Carol. Great to see you again. <laughs> it's so, so good to see you. I was just chatting with you a little bit, and I said it's been so long since I've seen you because yes. you moved away from Carson. So you're not somebody yes. we saw all the time, even when you were here. So yes. uh, first of all, can you tell us where you are, where you're quarantining, and is it where you currently live? Yes, I am quarantining at home in Los Angeles. Great. Okay. Uh, are you in your bedroom? It's very beautiful background you have there. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. This is my 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 bedroom. <laughs> That's awesome. I love Thank all you. the posters and all the the memorabilia you have there for for Thank what you. you've been doing, and I'm sure everybody's yes. interested in hearing. So uh, we're talking about wild horse shows, and yes. can you tell me? Do you remember how old you were when you started, and what shows you did with wild horse? Well, uh, even before I started there, I think I was ten when I saw Suzuko. And my first show that I did with Wild Horse, I was 12 and it was Aladdin. Uh, I was Aladdin. <laughs> Aha, our lead Aladdin. We've had a couple versions of our Aladdin production and that was a spectacular one. Um, and you did I a loved it. job as Aladdin. You haven't Thank reprised you. that role, have you? <laughs> I have not, I would love to. <laughs> and um, you've had other memorable roles with us. Do you remember what they were? Yes, I played the caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland. I was the wolf and the lumberjack and a whole bunch of other crazy things in Nick Tickle Fairy Tale Detective, and I was Grey Lag in Honk. Wow, a lot of great shows. I, I we were in the middle of doing Alice in Wonderland. We had rehearsals that we had to stop because of the quarantine. And oh. I think of you every time I see our caterpillars on stage. And I wish kind of I had you here to kind of give them your Rasta accent that you did. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It was so wonderful. And I know we have pictures of that um, when you were the caterpillar. You were amazing. I actually have a oh. newspaper with me right here with oh. a picture of me as the caterpillar. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh. Brings back so many memories. Oh, gonna, absolutely. I'm going to make sure our new caterpillars that we double cast get to see that. Oh, uh, awesome. <laughs> do you happen to have a crazy or funniest story that has happened to you backstage or on stage? I do. I gave some thought to this, and there's so many fun things that happen, but the things that really resonate with me, because something that means a lot to me, especially at Wild Horse, is performing for children. And there were a couple of shows where the interactions with the children were just so funny and wholesome. I remember during the school show of Aladdin, it was all kids in the audience, tons of them. And we were singing A Whole New World and we had fog rolling off the stage to sing it out of the clouds. And all of the kids in the middle of the song, when the fog reached them, started coughing and swatting their hands to like get the fog away from their face. And it was so hard to keep a straight face because we're in the middle of this big number and they're just like, <laughs> and it was so funny. And the other one I really liked was during Nick Tickle, we were performing at Art Town in Reno. And there was a, it was a different venue than the Children's Museums. So there was a big glass window behind the stage. And all of our crosses backstage were in full view of the audience through this big glass window. And I remember like hamming that up as the wolf, like running behind the glass window, like all like dazed and confused. <laughs> and the children were like laughing and pointing me out like, there's the wolf! And it was so much fun. Those are the things that they warm my heart to this day. Yes, the magic of live theater when you don't realize that the fog is going to make everybody choke. <laughs> Bring me up to date on what you've on been what doing. On what I've been doing? Um, yes. Sure. Well, I am working as a performer and an actor primarily. I work in voiceover and little bit parts for television. I am currently also working as a show writer and producer for an immersive theater company that does events across Southern California. Most recent onstage appearance was Evil Dead the Musical, a comedy horror romp from Toronto. I was in Hairspray Live on NBC, and I've done things for Disney Channel, NBC, just a little bit of everything, and lots of Halloween stuff. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So you are a working actor in LA. Yes. Okay. Very because grateful to say. Very that, grateful that, to say. That's wonderful yeah. because so many of our young people have aspirations to go to California, to go to New York, 
Um, and you know, the, the, the golden uh, pinnacle there is always Broadway. And I always say being a working sure. actor is what you want to strive for, you know, that not Sam. Hey, Sam. No, don't. Don't touch me. Sam, come on. No, no. Look, I can't anymore. You don't know how scared it was. I thought you were dead. I was picking up the clothes I should wear to your funeral. Sam, you're hurting me. Apparently not enough. Stop that, okay? I can't take this anymore, the looks you give me. What looks? She look like I lose control or something. That I I'm gonna go on a jag. I can't take the way you must think about me. What am I thinking? And I'm too much of a mess for you. You don't want to be with me. Well, I really, I love voiceover. I love voice matching where I get to play like a pre-existing character that, you know, like impressions, but highly advanced impressions. Uh, for example, for a YouTube TV series called Liza On Demand with Liza Koshy, I was hired to voice match Will Smith. So I was the voice of Will Smith for a parody segment on their show. I've been the voice of the ghost host for a couple of Haunted Mansion 50th anniversary celebrations. I love doing that. But I do also work a lot in the Halloween industry. Over my shoulder here, you may see a face that is a prosthetic from a Halloween event I worked at. Uh, yeah, just, I, I really enjoy any time I get to be performing. Honestly, I just really like telling stories and building a world. So I enjoy it all. So tell our young people, because many of them probably don't know, how do you get into voiceovers? Ooh, so that's a really good question. Uh, the voiceover industry is something that has honestly something for everybody. You figure out what it is that you like to do in terms of how to use your voice. Some people are primarily commercial voice actors who can just have a very like calming, selly sort of voice. Like you would, you would believe them if they recommended a product, you know, kind of voice. And then there's animation voiceover, which is primarily what I do. Voice matches, impressions, promo, audio books is a whole other thing. I would say just figure out what it is that you like to do. And you can learn a lot of that from doing theater. I've come to realize, obviously, that was my start. And it was so helpful to me in doing things like the Caterpillar with the accent and the singing. You know, I found what made me feel most at home and something I love about voiceover that I think a lot of young actors especially can, you know, hopefully it will resonate with them that you can play any character in voiceover regardless of your age, your skin color, your gender, it doesn't really matter in voiceover. Just if you feel it in your heart, you can bring it to life. And I encourage everybody who wants to try it to just find what makes them feel most at home. That's great, that's great. So when you audition for a voiceover, do they tell you specific what character they want and then you come up with that and you put it on a reel for them? Sometimes uh, they'll usually give you a little picture that's like no bigger than like that on a piece of paper and they'll say, well, this is the character. Uh, this is a little bit about the character. Here's like a paragraph. And then they pretty much give you free reign to do the voice. And I've heard sometimes like Seth Green, for example, was talking to me about Family Guy when I worked with him on a set. And he had mentioned that everybody looked at the Chris character and did like a surfer dude voice. And he was like, well, everybody's doing that. So let me do something completely different. And then everybody's going to be fooled and it'll be funny. So, you know, <laughs> you have a lot of free reign to just like do what you find to be unique, you know, and, and I love that. <laughs> That's, that's really fascinating, and I'm so glad to see all of our young people have they branched off into different categories of the business. Even yes. some of our young actors who have gone into different careers, um, yes. they're still using their theater skills. So um, you pursued a career in the arts. So yes. can you tell us why you decided to continue with that career? Absolutely. Well, I enjoyed it so much as a kid at Wild Horse, performing my shows there. I feel very at home amongst people who are also in the entertainment industry, like you and everybody else that I worked with. You know, artists are a really special type of person, and I feel so at home among them. And for me, you know, entertainment is a lot more than just a career. I, I find it to be a really big part of my life. I want to give back because when I was a kid, I was influenced by things on TV or in theme parks or in theater that really shaped me into who I am. You know, there's, there's a lot you can learn from what you see on television or in theater. And because of the really amazing, wholesome family content or good Halloween stuff or you name it as a kid that I had, 
I just really want to give back and, you know, help the next generation have similar experiences. And that's why I, I'm so happy you asked me here today, especially <laughs> because we're talking to the next generation. That's what I love doing. Right. And, and, I, and I love talking to our alumni because I'm getting so much from them of what they learned them when they were with us and, and where you've gone. And it's just so nice to be able to catch up. Do you have a dream role that you would like to do that you haven't done yet? I do. Uh, so in theater specifically, one of my favorite musicals, and it's actually over my shoulder at this very moment, some playbills, I love Fun Home, the musical based oh. on the cartoonist Alison Bechtel's life. I love it. The role of Bruce Bechtel, her father, is absolutely my dream role in theater. There is an incredibly meaty part for a male actor. I love it. It's, it is like... It's everything you could want in a drama role. It's like Shakespeare heightened, and it's a really great musical in general. But other shows I would love to be involved in in any capacity is Bill and Ted's Excellent Musical Adventure. I love Bill and Ted. Mamma Mia, I love Mamma Mia. I will do any part in Mamma Mia. I will play Donna if they let me. <laughs> and, and I also really want to be in Rocky Horror Show. So a little bit of everything. <laughs> that, that's so funny because um, I've been talking to other actors, and Rocky Horror comes up a lot. Does and, it? And you remember Heather Canfield, she just played the lead in uh, Mamma Mia. Yes. The I was watching the alumni videos and she looked so good as Sophie. Her voice was perfect for that role. I totally wish I could have seen that. It's so cool to see everybody that I used to work with, like going on and achieving things and Brayden in Alaska still doing <laughs> art and oh my goodness and Peyton and he went to New York and Heather's a teacher. It's so awesome. I just yeah. I love it. It is. It is. And everybody's been really excited about, you know, meeting up with everybody again and, and connecting, which is really, Absolutely. really nice. Absolutely. So yeah. I kind of put everybody on the spot and I asked if you would like to share one of your talents with us. So sure, give it a go. I am going to be doing the voice of Captain Hook from the Disney Peter Pan movie. <clears throat> What's that, Peter Pan? And now, my dear, you must remember there is no path through water to the happy hunting ground. This is your last chance, Tiger Lily. <laughs> thank you. What a transformation. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's one of my favorite shows, too. <laughs> I love Peter Pan. So much fun. <laughs> yeah. So any advice you would give our upcoming rising stars that may have aspirations to do what you're doing, uh, doing theater now, and are young and looking towards the future and their dreams? I mentioned is don't only see or audition for shows that you're already familiar with. As great as it is to work on things like Aladdin or Alice in Wonderland, I've also come to find that there's a lot of shows that we may not be inherently familiar with that have so much to offer as well. When I was a kid, I was in the pajama game and I was not, oh, I didn't know about the pajama game. And I remember I was like nine or 10, I turned my nose down like, oh, I'm not gonna, I don't know what that is. It's not hairspray, you know, it's the, and, I am glad I went out for it anyways because it became one of my favorite musicals. So don't, my advice in that, for that one would be don't limit yourself to what you already know. Hamilton is awesome. We love Dear Evan Hansen. These are great. But there's a lot of other things out there too, which are a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Pay attention to everything that happens in the show, even the parts that aren't your turn. Familiarize yourself with the themes and the blocking and context in case something changes, you'll be prepared. Uh, I'm going to echo the sentiment that every one of the other ones so far has said that there are no small parts in theater <laughs> and anything. I will definitely agree with that. You definitely don't need to be a lead to be a part of bringing the world to life in any capacity. Uh, understudies and swings are superheroes. Aspire to be like them. If you're watching this and you're an understudy or a swing or ensemble, you are important. You matter. There are no small parts and you've got the show on your back, so hang in there. There's a girl named Presley Ryan who was an understudy for Fun Home, understudy for Sound of Music Live. She understudied Beetlejuice on Broadway. She was Lydia, the understudy. And then when Sophia and Caruso left the production, suddenly it was all on Presley Ryan. Understudies matter. Be grateful for every job. The early bird gets the worm. Be on time or early. And finally, say good morning and good night to the tech crew and your director and say thank you to everyone. 
<laughs> I love that. That's, That's my perfect. I couldn't have written a better script myself. But oh. the funny <laughs> thing is that Grant also had his notes because he didn't want to uh, forget anything and he read oh them. <laughs> That's all, Grant is always prepared. That's great. I love <laughs> how you guys are so prepared and you want to make sure you're saying everything you need to say. <laughs> Well, it's a really well, great opportunity to get to talk to the younger generation. I'm really grateful for oh, this. I love that. I love that. Do you ever get up into this area at all? I haven't been as of late with things. I've just been so busy here, but I believe my mom is planning to retire there. So I will definitely be back and, you know, skiing. I've never tried skiing. There's so much I want to do in Lake Tahoe. You know, like I'm going to have more opportunities to come back and I want to support Wild Horse. Just know that Carol and Pat and everyone there and and every one of the alumni, if you're watching this, every one of the alumni, you always have my love and support in everything you do. And I would love to come back and support you guys some more. That's great. Well, I would love, you know, when your mom retires and you come up here, come up here and um, do a class or two for us with our young kids. Because we love that our kids that have gone away and have grown up and are doing things in the arts, come back and, and teach. So I would love to see you do that. I would absolutely oh, love to. Well, um, please say hi to your mom, too. When you guys go away and grow up, we seem to lose some of our families along the way, and we miss her also. So please give her our best. And um, when you come Thank back you. to Carson City, come and see us for sure. Meanwhile, stay safe and healthy down there in L.A. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> nice talking to you. Thank Bye. you. You too. Where is